I'm not just saying, here, here's a start line, here's a finish line, go. I think that's what a lot of people want. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of that with it, but I also try and integrate a little bit of a, a mental piece where you have to think about it a little bit too. Mm-hmm. I love the dynamic of the, the physical and the mental piece. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. Today's guest is a return guest. We're going to pick back up on the conversation from last week and go in a little bit of a different avenue. We're going to be talking with Adam Bratton. He does Human Powered Movement and MJ Bratton Consulting, and we're going to be talking kind of the introduction around who he is, what he's about, and what he's been up to as an introduction. Uh, we t- spoke in our previous episode more about uh, how to get things done and the psychology around how people put things in action. So you want to reference that, make sure you click on the link below and find out about that. But before we get into the conversation, I do want to invite you to subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, follow us, subscribe, Facebook, make sure you follow us. Uh, You'll see the new episode every Tuesday morning. And then on the audio version, find out more. You can subscribe on whatever podcast platform you enjoy by visiting lockdoc.net slash podcast. Grab a cup of coffee. Let's jump into this conversation. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes and it's time for a coffee break. Time for a coffee break. Oh, yeah. Let, let's jump into the conversation today. So yeah. um, you've got some history in the area, and you were you were recommended for the podcast from Aaron Beaver, who's uh, probably sitting on the other side of the wall right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and and he was he was excited about it because he was saying, Man, this guy, he brings a lot of of interesting knowledge and the way that you go about connecting things together. So we, right. were, we were even chatting about it some this morning uh, prior to sitting down and recording was about how you have had a unique opportunity to bring a lot of brands together that you wouldn't necessarily expect to bring together. Right. right? So, right. Uh, and, and, and I've seen this with, uh, with, um, Blair from Ortho Carolina, yeah. Yeah. who does an amazing job with those types of things. Yeah. So we can talk a little bit about that. But I guess from an introductory standpoint, you run an independent organization that has kind of two separate arms. So kind of give us right. a kind of an overall structure of, of kind of what you have going on. Yeah. So um, I've I um, originally grew up kind of in a in the sport and recreational world where it's just kind of an active an active environment. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was a kinesiology undergrad, which is a study of human movement, and a um, psychology minor. Okay. And so I wanted to be like a strength coach or something in, in sure. school to really kind of you know help help bring out the most you know the efficient and, and high level you know uh, physical abilities. Um, I moved to Virginia Beach after school and, and got into some personal training. And then I uh, worked at the Y where I was kind of in more of an administrative role. I was overseeing the uh, fitness and aquatics and membership and sports and all that kind of stuff. And so I very quickly learned that everything is a business, like everything, no matter what, is a business. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if you're selling widgets or burgers or, or a service or whatever, it's all business. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, that's when I said, hey, I've got to go back to school and get my MBA. And so that's what brought me here to here to Charlotte. Gotcha. And so right after I graduated, I was working at ESPN, obviously this huge, massive, you know, international um, uh, company. And then I transitioned into the Whitewater Center, which was really a great way. And I was there for nine years and a great way to blend my background and kind of what I was trying to do with build a business, right? It was recreational, it was active, it was movement, Mm -hmm. and um, but it was building a business. So I was there for about nine years and... um, uh, eventually just decided I needed to kind of move on from that for, for, uh, you know, read my young kids and sure. just kind of ready for something else. And so, and love those guys to death. They are phenomenal people. Um, so I created my agency, my marketing agency, mm-hmm. and I, I've loved the idea of, you know, finding value, right. Building a business, extracting value and leveraging, you know, resources. And so that's been really cool to kind of create that again on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, started it in January of, of 2020, which is of course perfect timing as as we all know. Yeah. And then um, really when COVID hit, um, like I said, I've always been active, I've always been, been moving of some sort. And so when COVID hit, you know, everyone everything shut down as we know, and I was just getting antsy. So I literally um, challenged myself and others, but myself to bike every single street of Huntersville. Okay. So it was just you know no one was driving. Um, I wanted to get out of the house. I wanted to do something active and 
productive. Mm-hmm. And so um, I put that out on my social platform and, and people were, were gravitating to it and enjoyed it. And so I said, well, maybe there's something to this. So that's what kind of spurred the um, of creating the second entity of my agency, which is human powered movement. Gotcha. And the mission is to facilitate greater human powered experiences in all of us, whether that be climbing Everest, mm-hmm. whether that be, you know, walking your dog around the park, it doesn't matter what that is. It's sure. going to vary from person to person. So I've really kind of created, you know, in, that agency on one side, as we were saying before is, I mean, that's B2B, right? That's saying, Hey, I'm a service provider. I help you with strategic development, with marketing tactics, with all that kind of stuff. And I have a B2C platform, which is human powered movement. Mm-hmm. And those can feed each other, right? I mean, it, if, if a client wants to talk to that qualified and filtered audience, then perfect. Here's a perfect conduit for it. Yeah. And vice versa, if I, you know, people see the value of the consumer facing platform and they say, wow, let's dig into this. What, you know, what else is going on behind here? Then that's where the, you know, the agency side can kind of come in and, and, um, and help facilitate on the, on the back end as well. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun dynamic and it's really two things that from a personal and a professional standpoint, it's two things that have integrated really well for me intrinsically. Sure. I feel good about being able to add value out in the marketplace or to a consumer or to a client. And so that's been really fulfilling for me to kind of, to kind of start that up and build it and, and find some success. Uh, when we were walking across the building, coming over into the studio this morning, you were talking about how uh, you find it interesting to kind of see the behind the scenes type stuff, yeah. see the architecture behind yeah. it. You get to see the the outward facing component of yep. whatever it is, yep. and then you kind of start to appreciate more of of an organization because you can start to see the architecture behind it. Yep. Uh, and so from what you just described, I would imagine that people that know about human powered movement or have seen that outside is like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And probably, I'm just going to toss it out there, don't realize that it's kind of, you know, operated with a very minimal infrastructure behind the scenes. Correct. Right? Correct. Because it's it's empowering and impacting a lot of people. Yep. All right. It's got it's got kind of a big face, simplified architecture, architecture yep. behind it. Right. So I appreciate you breaking that down because I think a lot of times people fail to execute on something because the 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 path between the idea and the path between the final product or the execution or mm-hmm. as we were talking about earlier the minimal viable product uh, of getting something out there is a bit murky. Correct. And I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the years, and, and I think that that is one common denominator with that separates a lot of folks that actually, if you whatever you classify as success, mm-hmm. being able to bring something to life between that and people that are just managing, right? right. Just, just barely getting through, is the ability to take an idea, take a concept and bring it out to execution. Well, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you know, like we were talking about before, I've, you know, I've got a wife and two kids and I'm sitting here saying, okay, I'm going to go out completely on my own Mm -hmm. and put myself out there both on the agency side. And and then again, with human power movement side, and it's tough, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that, that's, that gets you out of your comfort zone Mm -hmm. pretty quickly. And there's a lot of, I mean, we all know there's thousands, there's million endless good ideas, Yep. but you have to, put them into practice. And that's exactly what you're saying. That's not, that's not very easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, that's a gamble. We don't like, we don't, human nature, we don't like to fail. Right. And there's a, you know, statistically it'll show you that going out on your own or creating a new, you know, statistically most Mm -hmm. businesses fail. So that's kind of a, so again, I'm a psychology minor. That's kind of an interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, mindset to say, okay, wait a second. Do I just stay in my comfort zone and just kind of, you know, do my, traditional thing, nine to five, whatever it is, mm-hmm. or do I really put myself out there? Mm-hmm. And that's not an easy mental barrier to get over yeah. to even begin with, sure. regardless of whether you know how to operate a business or grow something, or um, that's just the one of the very first initial challenges or, or hurdles to cross. And that's, that's a tough one. I struggled with that quite a bit. We understand the frustrations HOA board members and property managers face when deciding the best solution for their HOA and pool security. Should we use a keypad, hand out keys, or install a key card system? Do we even need cameras? These are some of the questions that are difficult to navigate, and we're here to help. At LockDock Security, we've spent over 20 years working with homeowners associations and property managers to find the system that best fits the pool and HOA needs. Camera systems for the front gate or front entrance 
key card systems for the pool gates or simply updating the gate so that it meets safety and code compliance. We like to take the guesswork out of the process to answer any questions and help find the right solution. Our mission is to help you protect your people and your property, and that includes pools. Contact our team today to schedule your free consultation for your community. I want to take a quick diversion because yeah. that's always fun. So you, you're a psychology major. Or minor. 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 Right? Psychology mm-hmm. minor. So uh, some of the things that you're talking about are very intriguing to me, and I have no psycho- psychology knowledge base whatsoever. Most everything that I do is just made up. Um, <laughs> but I'm very intrigued, and we have been for a long time around personality assessments. So we, we right. lived off of Myers-Briggs mm-hmm. a lot, but we are currently using this, this uh, system called Culture Index. Yep. And it talks a lot about, you know, uh, understanding kind of how people see the world and how, how where, where it's not even about their strengths because you got strength finders and all that stuff right. and disc assessments and all, but more so on understanding, one, how people kind of approach situations. And it's interesting because over the course of time that I've been doing this podcast, I've, I've sat across the table from a, from a wide number of people. Yeah. And one thing that obviously it comes in common is some people, for some people, the path to where you're going is just inevitably clear because it just makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. And for another half of the world or the other half of the population, it's not, it's not abundantly clear. Yeah. And so, and, and I, that may sound very vague in what I just said, but it makes a whole lot of sense in my mind. And probably for the very reason that I'm trying to explain when, when certain people approach a situation, they can see the end and they can understand the path to get there. It just right. becomes visible. And for other people, it's like, well, I want to get there, but the that distance is just, or either distance or the path is just not yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I know you know from a human power movement standpoint, you guys do these these, uh, these races, I guess these challenges, challenges and events. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got a path. Mm-hmm. It's a predetermined set of set yep. of strategy that anybody that shows up can follow. Right. They don't have to plow the path themselves. Yeah. For somebody like yourself, you enjoy plowing the path. Like you enjoy mm-hmm. figuring out the course and doing that. Yep. And so from a business perspective, that is the I think that's the interesting thing. I was talking earlier about being an integrator. That's the thing that I see with you is even when you were talking about, you know, at the Whitewater Center and de- different places, that's what you did. You walked into a situation and you see the path. You clearly see a path. Right. Maybe you had to adapt along the way. Like yep. you're not like, hey, I know the perfect plan. Right. But you had the capability to follow that path. Well, from a psychology standpoint, mm-hmm. I'm, I drew all that around to hopefully a question. From a okay. psychology standpoint, does that is that resonate? Is that is that factual or is that just completely off base? That that people see kind of the world or, or see see their roles very differently like that. Absolutely. I mean, I think, um, you know, and that's where, you know, I'll go back to like a thing about a, a resume, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're putting in a resume like that, that blows my mind. The whole concept of a resume, like I get that, like, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. You have to tactically know what you're doing. You have mm-hmm. to show, you know, you have to be rock solid on that. Mm-hmm. But it all, I always laugh when it's like, hey, submit a resume. I'm like, well, that, you're not hiring a resume. You're hiring a person. Like you, how do you factor in office dynamics or culture or energy levels, positive or negative into a resume? Like Mm -hmm. you're hiring a person, Mm -hmm. right? And that person is the person that brings value to the organization. Part of it is the resume. Yeah. But the other part of it is the mindset is the approach is the energy It's all those intangibles. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just a, I think it's a very interesting, uh, I guess, process that we kind of follow. It's a little bit antiquated, but it's, but yeah, I mean, pe- people are factoring in all kinds of different things into this. Yep. And, and I think psychology is a big piece of that, of, of where it's like, you know, if you're not coming in with, with, you know, a positive energy or, you know, something, something that's going to help mm-hmm. move the ball forward, then that can be massively detrimental. And so I don't know. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a tough one. I think employers are mm-hmm. kind of struggling to figure out. And now we don't have like a human interaction yeah. right, in, the, oh, yeah. in the world that we're in now. And so I think from a psychological standpoint, that's massively impactful. And it can yeah. be, that can, that can be a positive impact or that can be very much a negative impact. So I, I want to circle back around to the path thing, because I think it's very, 
and, and, and you may, it's may be very intentional on your end. You may be very, very aware of it, but I, I just kind of want to circle back around to that, that component. But before I do, I want to, I want to tackle a couple of things on what you just said, especially from a resume standpoint. Mm-hmm. Of all the interviews that I've done um, and with the hiring that we've done in, within our organization, the resume is probably the last thing that I ever look at, if I even look at it at all. And I right. feel bad at times because people come in with their, you know, their three copies of their resume right. for their interview. Right. And I'm like, I, that's just telling me what you've done. Right. We want to know where we're, where we're going. But again, I've, I've ultimately understood that's just kind of part of my path or part of my process. So going back to the path side of things, and this is what I think is very interesting with you, is with human power movement, mm-hmm. you're activating people to do something. Mm-hmm. I'm, try, you're, I'm you're trying to elicit a reaction. Yep. But there, there's nothing that you're bringing to the table, and I don't mean this as an insult. I, I actually bring, I think this is a very high compliment. There's nothing that you're doing that people couldn't do on their own. Correct, 100%. Right? But you're carving out a path and a plan for them that it's easy for them to follow. Correct. hundred percent. So I was a personal trainer. My first job out of school was yeah. personal trainer. And I said back then, and that was in 2006, mm-hmm. and I still say it now, I would love a personal trainer. Yeah. I would love, I mean, I'm, I'm, I do something active every day. I don't need motivation, but, but there's something about having an external influence mm-hmm. that helps you along that process. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with human power movement. Yeah, you can go out and do whatever you want on your own. Think about think about races. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to run a 5K. Mm-hmm. Why Why would you – it blows my mind, and people do it all the time, and I do it. Yeah. Why would you pay money yeah. to run on a, on a three-mile path. road mm-hmm. that you can run for free? Yeah. It's because people want experiences. People want that – something to motivate them, something mm-hmm. to inspire them, something to, something to keep them moving. Yeah. And people are willing to – give their resources, time, dollars, effort, and otherwise for that, that experience, mm-hmm. that mindset, that, that incentive. Yeah. And so that's what human power movement is, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I've heard some people will join those races without that, without paying the, pro- mm-hmm. the price to do that. They'll just kind of jump in at various yeah. stages. And like some a, of like them a like bandit. Will, yeah. You know, they'll like run backwards through the thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've heard all kinds of interesting, yeah. it's just interesting stories. Well, and I wrote, I wrote a, on human power movement. There's a, like a journal. It's, it's a blog, which I don't want to call it a blog, because, yeah. but uh, I'm a, I'm a blogger. I'll admit it. Sure. But the, the, the topic of the journal was, one might even say an influencer. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> don't go there. Um, <laughs> the, well, hopefully in a positive way, the, um, the journal I wrote was about the experience of Rocky River Shiver, which okay. was a, a mountain bike event that Human Power Movement put on our first in-person event. Mm-hmm. And it was, and again, I oversaw all the events at the Whitewater Center. So I've done thousand at um, ESPN. I was in the event team, so thousands of events. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm not going to say they're easy, but at this day, they just kind of come naturally. Yeah. My approach with that was, I want to create this experience. Sure. And so the beer that I brought in mm-hmm. this morning. Was it was a homebrewed? I've been a homebrewer for twelve years. Okay. It was a homebrewed beer. My, the designer did the label. Like mm-hmm. we hand bottled it, hand labeled it. Every single participant got a homebrewed beer at the end. Mm-hmm. They all got. Um, it was named the sh- the Rocky River Shiver. So they all got like hand whittled <laughs> like shivs mm-hmm. uh, made out of cedar that I pulled from the trail system. Like I integrated all these just uh, these different experiential pieces into sure. the event because it was. It wasn't a race. It was called an event, mm-hmm. and I wanted to create an experience for that. And so I factored in all these other things because people want that, right? Sure. Everybody that finished got got paid cash. Yeah. And if you didn't finish, you didn't get cash. So there's the psychological piece that I threw into it. So it was just, and I think that's what drives people. Mm-hmm. And I, with Human Powered Movement at least, I mean, it's different with MJ Bratt and the agency side, but with Human Powered Movement, I'm trying to tap into your mind a little bit too. Mm-hmm in a physical way, mm-hmm. but I want you to say, hey, yeah, you need to think about this a little bit more too. Like, I'm not just saying, here, here's a start line, here's the finish line, go. I think that's what a lot of people want. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of that with it, but I also try and integrate a little bit of a, a mental piece where you have to think about it a little bit too. Mm-hmm. I love the dynamic of the the physical and the mental piece. I, I don't know everything about the MJ Bratton consulting side, but mm-hmm. I would challenge that it's, you're doing the same thing over there. Just it's without the physical component. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, same thing. All right, let's figure this out. Let's, when I walked in here, I love pulling back the, mm-hmm. the curtain and seeing the insides. And so same thing with, you know, if I'm going to a climb saying, cool, let's dig into this. Mm-hmm. Let's understand 
where we can uh, extract some value. Let's understand where there's some potential issues. Let's mm-hmm. understand how we can do this in a in a more valuable and an efficient way. Yeah, and, and it, that's and exactly it, right. And it, and again, not as an insult, I think as, as a compliment. That's something that they could do on their own. It's not anything that it takes a miraculous individual to do. But the unique thing that you bring to the table is helping to 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 bring the plan to fruition or to exactly figure out the plan exactly. Can you copy this key? That's a question we get asked about 3,422 times a year. And how can you actually be sure that the person who asked that question is supposed to get a copy of that key? Well, we think you should always know who can copy your keys to your business and your home because it could be your neighbor, an old employee, a contractor, or even worse, your mother-in-law. At LockDock Security, we believe in protected key systems, so you always know who has a copy of your key. To find out more, visit LockDoc.net or stop by our Charlotte location. LockDoc Security, helping you protect your people and your property. In the marketing world that I live, like everybody kind of generally knows what you need to do, but they're not exactly sure how to do that, right? Mm-hmm. How do I get there? Like, yeah, I know that I want to show up first on Google search. Sure. Well, how do you do that? Well, of course, it's not that easy, but... You know, everyone's saying, yeah, I want to show up here. I want to have, you know, I want to have inbound calls. I want to have all this stuff, but they're not, you know, h- how exactly do we do that? And that's what I love coming in and saying, all right, well, let's, let's peel back the layers. Let's, sure. let's look at it. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. What resources do we have? What do we not have? Let's just understand what we're trying to do here. And you're right. And it's bandwidth, convenience. Mm-hmm. We, we make decisions off of human nature is to make decisions off what is most convenient for mm-hmm. us. And marketing, generally speaking, is oftentimes something that gets pushed on the back burner. Yeah. It's the Eisenhower matrix, right? You know, that one? Mm-hmm. it's what's important and what's urgent. Mm-hmm. Human nature is to just focus on what's urgent, mm-hmm. whether it's important or not. Yep. But if you know, I mean, as we know, high level performers focus on what's, what's important. important, whether it's urgent or not. Mm-hmm. Right. And so anytime I'm talking to a client, I'm saying, all right, well, let's let's understand this this mindset, this mm-hmm. Eisenhower matrix mindset first, and let's really start focusing on what's important. Because I a lot of times, and I've seen a thousand times, it's just urgent, 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 oh, yeah. which is why some of the some of the things get pushed on the back burner, which is why people can do it. Mm-hmm. They just don't, whether it's time or bandwidth or just the ability to kind of understand mentally and getting into that mindset. Well, <laughs> I, I totally agree with you, and I, I think a big hurdle, and, and maybe this is the uh, a major key takeaway for today's conversation, is it's I, I it's not there's a there's certain people a certain group of the population that it can do things and do them with excellence, mm-hmm. and they have arrived at where they are because they followed a predetermined path or they had mm-hmm. somebody help them guide them to that path. Right to get to the next place that they want to go. I want to get to first on Google or I want to build my business, multiply it times five or right. whatever. They have to figure out, they don't, they don't have, they, they don't possess the in ability in them to figure out the actual plan. So it mm-hmm. requires the external. So when I say that they could do it, they can actually take, uh, take keys to execute on those things, but they don't know the steps that they need to execute in the order to do that. Correct. So that, that's it, a, there's a process that you have to kind of follow too. Yep. It's not just throwing darts, right? Mm-hmm. Anybody can throw darts, but it's like, all right, let's step back first. Yep. Let's let's identify the goal. Mm-hmm. Let's identify the objective. Like, action is very different than productivity, right? Like, we can all be active all day long, but if we're not getting anything done, then we're not really helping ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to the urgency and importance. Yeah. Where Urgency is kind of action. Mm-hmm. Importance is productivity. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a very big difference between those two. And I think sometimes those those lines get crossed or blurred, maybe the better way to say it. Yep. And that's another piece where, you know, I love coming into an organization or clients and hey, let's let's step back, mm-hmm. let's 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 dissect this and let's understand what we're doing here and let's refocus in a more productive way versus just an, an active way. Well, it's it's funny, too, because you said on your um, event that you did, not the race, the event, that <laughs> yeah. you if you finished, you got cash. Right. So for those that are motivated by the urgent, 
that's a big trigger for them. I got to finish, get cash. Got to finish, get yep. cash. That yep. brings that brings the important because you're ultimately at that point focusing on the important. These are the things that need to be done in order for for this to to happen. Yep. But the urgency comes into play because yeah. they get the payoff. <laughs> it's a it's a fun conflict. Yeah, right. It's uh, and, into, and that's what I, that's what I love about it. And the feedback was great too. And so what I did was it was forty dollars for the event. Mm-hmm. Ten of those dollars went straight into a cash purse. Sure. So it's ten, nobody cares about ten bucks. Mm-hmm. Like right. But they do care about not getting mm-hmm. their money back, whether it's a dollar or a million, you know, whatever the dollar amount is. So again, it's just that that mental, um, you know, kind of aspect that you throw in there. Sure. That you know, there was countless people that were like, man, <laughs> you know, because it was three laps around this pretty pretty tough um, mountain bike trail system out here, and so people came in on their second lap and did not want to go back out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can talk to Aaron; he yeah. knows all about. And and only half the people finished this whole thing to begin with. And but there were some people like I, I, I just have to go back out, and I <laughs> feel like I feel like trash. It's hot. It's mm-hmm. you know beat down, but I gotta go out there because I know I don't want my buddy taking my money. Yeah, and so that was just this. It was just a super fun. It wasn't a, a psychology experiment, but it was just really fun for me to kind of see yeah. that all kind of play out. If it was a psychology experiment, then that was a cruel one because you did it like <laughs> the hottest weekend of the month. Yeah. It, to be fair, the, the event was was called the Rocky River Shiver, mm-hmm. and then the tagline was a hellacious mountain bike event. <laughs> <laughs> so to be clear, it was it was framed up as as not a very easy expectations uh, were set exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, hey, thanks again for joining us, Adam. It was great, wonderful conversation. Love spending time with you and uh, learning more about what you've got going on. All the links to uh, his businesses and his uh, uh, Instagram profiles and everything to get in contact with their organizations is available below. So make sure you check that out. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. New episode every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. We'll see you next time right here on the Coffee Break Podcast.